The derivative as a function. Objectives. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the difference between the derivative at a point and a derivative function, recognize all notations for the derivative of a function, set up the limit needed to find the derivative of f of x, and explain the relationship between differentiability and continuity. So far, we have been able to find the numerical derivative at a point, or the slope of the tangent line at a particular point. So now we're going to explore the derivative as a function that will allow us to find the derivative at any x equals a, where the function f of x is differentiable. So here's what I mean by that. In the last section, we had to do all of this work, either this left side or this left side, just to find the derivative at the one point, x equals 3, to find out that the slope of the tangent line was 6. So if I changed the x value, if I said, well now find me the derivative at x equals 10, then we'd have to do this whole process all over again. So we'd have to find f prime of 10, so anywhere here there's a 3, we'd have to replace with a 10, and do it all over again. So instead, we're going to find a function, and remember a function is a rule, so that we can use that rule to find the derivative at any x value. Alright, so here's the rule, the formal definition of the derivative given as a function. The derivative of a function f is the limit of the difference quotient, f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0, of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And we say that f of x is differentiable on the interval from a to b if f prime of x exists, if the derivative exists, which means if this limit exists, for all x values in the interval from a to b. So at this point you might be thinking this is the exact same definition that we saw previously. Almost. It's just that in the place of where we had the a, we're now substituting in the value of x. So remember, a stood for a particular number. We replaced a with a number like 3. So now we're going to leave an x value in that place. We're going to leave it a variable so that our final answer has a variable in it because our final answer is going to be a function in terms of some variable, in this case, x. So now let's take a look at an example. All right, so given f of x equals x squared plus 1, find f prime of x using the derivative definition. So we can try to graph what's happening here. We know x squared plus 1 is a parabola with a y-intercept of 1. All right, so what we're trying to find is the derivative, the slope of the tangent line, but at any x value. So we want to know the slope of the tangent line all over the place, at this value, and at this value, at this value, at every single value on the curve, we want to know the slope of the tangent line. So we're not going to be able to represent that with one number, but we are going to be able to get out a function from this limit definition that will allow us to substitute in any x value to find each of these corresponding slopes. So here's that um, limit of a difference quotient with x instead of a. So we want to find f prime of x, which is the limit as, whoops, not x, sorry, as h approaches 0, all right, of f of x plus h. So what did we do with the x plus h, or the a plus h in the previous example, was we substituted it into this x. So this first part here, f of x plus h, is going to become x plus h squared plus 1. So let's color code this. This portion right here is f of x plus h. So I took x plus h and substituted into this x. And now I want to do minus f of x. So f of x, well f of x is this whole thing right here, just x squared plus 1. So now this is my f of x. So, so far I have f of x plus h minus f of x, and then I want to put that all over h. And now I want to solve this limit. So this is the limit 
as h approaches 0. And here, to solve this limit, well, I'll just tell you. First, if you had tried direct substitution, you would get an indeterminate form. So we're going to have to use some algebra. We're going to have to distribute this x plus h squared quantity. So we're going to have x plus h times x plus h plus 1 minus, I'm going to distribute this negative here to both of these, so minus x squared minus 1. All right, and then all over h. So this is going to be long. So this is the limit as h approaches 0. So here we're going to have to distribute. We're going to get x squared plus, on the outside, xh. On the inside, hx, which is the same as xh. So that's two copies of xh. And then the last terms multiplied is plus h squared. So I did all that distributing here. Then there's still this plus 1. So plus 1 minus x squared minus 1 all over h. So now let's see what we can start to cancel, the plus 1 and the minus 1, the x squared and the minus x squared. So in the numerator, here's what I have left, 2xh plus h squared, and in the denominator I have an h. Well, I want to get rid of this h in the denominator. It causes that problem of a 0 on the bottom. So on the top, I'm going to factor out one of those h's. So the top will be h times 2x plus h, so factoring out one of the h's, I'll still have one h left over here, all over h, and we still have a limit as h goes to 0. So now these h's cancel, so I have the limit as h approaches 0 of 2x plus h. So now direct substitution allows me to replace the h with a 0 here, so this becomes 2x plus 0, which is just 2x. So following where I started, f prime of x equals 2x. So let's write that down. f, whoops, prime of x equals 2x. We found the derivative as a function. 2x is a linear function. So what that means is that I can use this function to find the derivative at any point. So if I wanted the derivative at 2, Instead of using that, that long definition where, to ha where I'd have to plug a 2 into each one of these x's, now I can just substitute the 2 into this nice short little function, 2x. So f prime of 2 is 2 times 2, which equals 4. And now another quick derivative I can take for a numerical value would be plugging in negative 3. So what's the slope of the tangent line at negative 3? So it should be a negative value, right? It's going to have a negative slope. So if I were to substitute in what's f prime of negative 3, well, it's 2 times negative 3, so it's negative 6. So this derivative function now allows me to find the derivative anywhere, the numerical derivative anywhere, if I plug in any x value where the function is differentiable. All right, so in this next example, if we're given the function the square root of x minus x cubed, set up the limit definition of the derivative required to find f prime of x. So we're just going to do the setup here. We're not going to follow through and evaluate the limit. That would be quite a bit of work in this particular example. So what I want to do is set up f prime of x. So first we have to know the limit definition. So the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So first I'm going to go ahead and try to uh, interpret f of x plus h in terms of this function. So it means I'm going to take x plus h and substitute it into this x, which means it goes into this x and this x. So this portion, it's color coded, so this portion is going to become the square root of x plus h minus x plus h cubed. So the green part I've circled here corresponds to the square root of x plus h minus quantity x plus h cubed. So the second thing I need to do is subtract f of x. So minus, well f of x is exactly this function, so minus the quantity radical x minus x cubed. And then we're going to still have the denominator of just h and we are still evaluating a limit as h goes to 0. 
So this is what I meant by just set up the limit definition. So this first part here is f of x plus h minus the second part is f of x all over h. So the most important thing uh, about this is being able to interpret this difference quotient and be able to substitute in the x plus h into each of these x's and really understand that composition of functions that's happening um, for the setup to be correct. And at this point, it is solving the limit. And this one in particular would be a complicated one to solve. Uh, so we're not going to actually follow through with solving it. But the last thing on this example I want to bring to your attention is that these parentheses are absolutely required. So if I erase these parentheses, it would not be the correct limit because then this minus only corresponds to the square root of x when in reality it needs to distribute to the second function here or so that the minus and the minus will cancel and become a plus. So if you didn't want to put parentheses, you would have to leave it as minus radical x plus x cubed. So that's one of the most typical mistakes in this class is forgetting to distribute when necessary. All right, so now it's time to explore all the different ways we can represent a derivative. So derivative notation. We want to let y equals f of x be some function and a is a constant. So we've seen this notation already. f prime of x is how it's read, and it means take the derivative and let x be the variable of the function. So the answer to f prime of x has to be a function, not just a number. So it has to be a function in terms of the variable x. As opposed to f prime of a, if a is a number, then my answer to this should be a number. It should represent the slope of the tangent line at a particular location, not just in general as a function. y prime, so because y equals f of x, I can also use the notation y prime. And this would, again, represent a function, as opposed to y prime of a would represent a number, the slope at a particular location. And so that's it in terms of prime notation. And we also have um, this other notation here that is read as the derivative of the function y with respect to the variable x. So I abbreviated with respect to as wrt. So if you want to write that down, wrt is with respect to. So the derivative of y with respect to x, or we can put it together as dy dx. So this is a derivative. It's a derivative of the function y. And the with respect to part means that we're treating x as the variable in the function. And this will make sense later when we get to more of our rules. But it tells you to apply the rule to the variable x. And so it's not always going to be x. We're going to change it to different variables like t because we're going to deal with time functions. And a lot of students get confused when I say with respect to. We're not, we're not respecting x. It just means that x is the variable. And so this answer, again, is a derivative function as opposed to this notation, dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x at, so this line here means at, x equals a. So this answer is a number. This is finding the derivative at the particular point a. And then again, because y equals f of x, I can also read this as the derivative of f with respect to x, or d dx of f of x. So this string of equalities down here is just all the different ways that I can equivalently represent the derivative as a function. So all of these are equivalent. And here are a couple of notes that are very important um, to understand, is that d dx by itself should not be thought of as a fraction or as itself a derivative. So d dx is not a derivative and it's not a fraction. What is it then? It should be thought of as an operator that instructs you to take the derivative and treat x as the variable. So we're familiar with operators or operations like plus or addition or multiplication. They're rules that we've learned that tell you to do something. So adding 
right? We're finding the sum of the two different numbers on either side, and we've learned that operation. So ddx is an operation. So again, math is its own language, and so I'm trying to explain the differences because a lot of students get confused, and it's going to make our lives a little bit harder if we don't understand the differences. So ddx is telling you to do something. It's telling you to take the derivative of whatever comes after it and treat x as the variable as opposed to dy dx is the derivative of the function y with respect to the variable x. So dy dx, if it says dy dx equals some function, that actually is the derivative function. But dy d dx, I'm sorry, is not a derivative. It's telling you to do something. It's telling you to take a derivative. So we're going to get a lot more practice with this, but if you understand it early on, it's definitely going to help you. All right, and now that we have the notion of differentiability, I can introduce a very, very, very important theorem that tells us that differentiability implies continuity. So what that means is, is, is that if you're told if f of x is differentiable at x equals c, then f is continuous at x equals c. So it's like you get two for one. If you're told a function's differentiable, then you know it is also continuous without them having to tell you. So you can just assume it is going to be true that because the function is differentiable, it is continuous. So what that also means is that if a function is discontinuous at x equals c, then it is what we call non-differentiable at x equals c. So it would mean that the limit of the difference quotient would not exist, would not be a real number, and therefore be non-differentiable. So differentiable implies continuity. Discon discontinuity, or being discontinuous, implies non-differentiability. But here's the biggest warning, is that continuity does not guaranteed differentiability. So you get the two for one when you get differentiable. So if you're told differentiable, then you know continuous. But if you know continuous, all you know is continuous. You don't necessarily know that the function is differentiable.